seemed very pointed and inappropriate. Hello, beautifuls. Welcome back to my Chanel and welcome to a very interesting episode today because I don't actually know if this is ever going to be able to be seen by my subscribers. And there's a very good reason for that, my loves. If you are watching this, it means that I have worked out a way to do this because Endemol TV, the people who own the copyright to There's Something About Miriam, have been viscerally attacking my previous two videos about There's Something About Miriam. Unfortunately, in the UK, for them, we have something known as fair dealing, which means that shows like this are protected by criticism laws. And that is exactly what I am doing here. She's got a degree. But they are abusing the content ID system by trying to flag my content as theft. And I think it's absolutely disgusting. So if you know Endemol TV, and if you know Endemol International Parent BV on Twitter or on YouTube or anyone, then yes, let them know how you feel about that because I will not be silenced about this content. This show influenced an entire generation with the concept that trans people are out there just as a trap to trap you into something that you don't want to be involved in and a tricky situation, shall we say. I think it's disgusting. And that's one of the reasons why I'm persevering with this series here on my channel because it is such an important crossroad of depravity and reality TV and humiliation someone and a group of people for TV ratings. And I think it's disgusting and it's not acceptable and it's a real dark place in TV history, especially British TV. With that being said, I am fighting the copyright on these videos. You cannot go back and watch episode one and episode two currently. I am hoping that I will be able to fix the situation. I don't know if I actually will. It might have to be an upload situation thing for my Patreons only. But fingers crossed, my loves, fingers crossed. Today, the skulls of my enemies, this is Endemol TV, this, <laughs> are here and I am drinking their blood because we are going to watch There's Something About Miriam, episode three. <sighs> Let's go. Tonight, the most explosive dating experience of a lifetime continues. It's so explosive because it's just filled with men fighting an ejaculate. I'm out. Six hunky guys in our right. millionaire's mansion, all yes. trying to win the heart of our gorgeous Latino model, Miriam. Yes, but she's got a secret. Uh on offer to our winner, a week's cruise on a luxury yacht with Miriam as company and £10,000 spending money. Unacceptable. Along the way, the highs, the lows... Oh, that was embarrassing, man. The jealousy. I can't even remember. It's been so long since I filmed one of these. I actually have a brand new face. <laughs> and I also can't remember who went last time. Was it? It was the first eviction, wasn't it? And it was the kind of like sweet guy. Oh, I can't remember his name, but we'll see. And the passion. Passion. One guy faces eviction every week, but this is no ordinary dating show because there's something about Miriam the guys don't know. She's got a degree. I wasn't born as a girl. I was born as a man. Lies. You were fed that line, sis. English is your second language. Uh. 2000s music on the go. On the go. She's got 2000s music on the go. I'm really in a mood today, my loves. I'm in a mood to viscerally fight for everybody's justice here. There's something about Miriam. Last time, Toby was the first Toby, of our that was his to be name. evicted by Miriam after Sorry. failing to make a splash on a fishing date. <laughs> oh, Not how I saw it going, to be honest. The date with Tom was more successful. A ride aboard her chopper to a luxury spa. Oh, yeah. We do not need to see up her skirt here. Stop doing that. She's quite mysterious. Five guys left. Tom, a 23-year-old lifeguard. Aaron, a 22-year-old chef. Right. Scott, a 22-year-old martial arts instructor. Yeah. Dom, a 28-year-old royal marine. Dom, by name and, and Mark, maybe nature. A 24-year-old songwriter. Who is very on tonight's show. The heat turned up as two character. more guys get a date with. Oh, paragliding! I was paragliding off the coast of Sicily. She becomes more attractive the more I get to know her. One gets within inches of discovering her secret. I want it more. How dare! Gets within inches! Oh, for God's sake. Everything in this is like a punny little punny pun 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 bitch. Right. We're down here to we five red blooded guys here at the Spanish Love Ooh, Palace. The frame rate has gone to the zero. of the stunning J Lo lookalike Miriam. There's a millionaire's cruise and £10,000 for grabs. But remember, the guys. Oh, yeah, they still win 10 grand as well. Miriam was born a man. 
She wasn't born a man. She was born a baby. Born a baby. Born a man. Show me a baby with a beard, and maybe then I'll accept that children can be men. Army Sergeant Major Tanner is on hand oh, to help Miriam guy. sort out the men from the boys. The challenge brings on. I hate the language in this show. It is such a little peek into all the like butt end of the joke trans people joke comments that were made during this time. It's just annoying, frustrating. And it reduces a segment of population to not being seen as people. It's kind of heartbreaking. Testosterone charge five to the racetrack to see if they can impress with their talent behind the wheel. Okay guys, Ooh. and your marks. Miriam and I have the same hairstyle yeah. today. What's this? Go-karting. Go-karting for the love of a sh- I got in that car and it just pretended I was in a movie for a moment, you know what I mean? You know, we're just flying around that course. Where are you? First to off the grid the in the number one car is Aaron. Oh. This is it. They've jumped right into this. There wasn't really any explanation or anything. Pete Tong from there. Oh. As Aaron disappears down the field, Scott makes his move, but comes unstuck at the first corner. Oh, she's dead now. Well, I started off all right. But Don't tell the parking the corner. Come on, Scott! So far, I think that Miriam likes Scott the most. Scott's now running last, and it's Mark in lucky car 13 who stormed into the lead. But Mark doesn't even like her, so... I think that was a little white lie. It's in the bag! You've got this! Just keep it steady! He was like, uh, she's high maintenance, scum. To the corners, that way I'm gonna stop people getting up my backside, really. Go! 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 Well, they had to keep that in, didn't they? second, by ramming quite a few people. Scott came right up my ass, banged me, and I thought, what the hell is that? Wow, that was quite a sentence. And you know exactly why they kept that in, because although that's a very innocent sentence in any other context, especially go-karting, in this show, that is a transphobic remark about men who date trans women. I banged me and I thought, what the hell is that? I rammed him and then span out from it, so I got last again, but I didn't really mind because I think I upset a few people in the way. Why are you here shouting at the go-karters? Aren't you a military man? I don't understand the point of this man. With Scott out of the race, Mark races away from the rest of the pack and takes the checkered flag from Miriam. Right. And gets a much needed boost for his flagging confidence. I think he's back in the game. I think he's uh, ready to start playing again. In the last episode, if I remember rightly, Mark really didn't actually like Miriam. He called her high maintenance and said that she wasn't his type. Blah de blah de blah de blah. I thought it was a little bit of like maybe hold your horses, Laxy Poosh. Champagne. It's definitely gonna change his take on things. I mean, you can see his face. You know, that's priceless. I think I've definitely impressed Miriam today. I drive really well. I hit the corners. I didn't slide out. I think I've definitely impressed her. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You enjoy yeah. it. But I'm so glad Mark went because he hasn't won any of the challenges. So I'm very proud of him. Very, very impressed. Oh, I feel nervous. I've actually just had a pang of like anxiety then. Oh no! This show is like watching a train wreck about to happen. There she is in her orange. As our five guys head back to the villa, we're about to spring a surprise on them. Oh, God. The single plum floating in perfume served in a man's bountiful penis. Miriam has flown in two sexy playmates from London to help spice up the Passion Palace and test the guys' loyalty. OK. Hi, my Why? name is Stacey, and I'm 21 years of age. You can expect lots of me this week. Lots of naughtiness, lots of teasing. <laughs> My name's Ngozi, I'm 25 years old. You can expect a lot of playfulness, a lot of fun. <laughs> Men 
again, are extremely easy to manipulate. I mean, you just have to get them on your side, be very jokey with them, apply them with lots and lots of alcohol, and they are putty in your hands. I always get... What is happening? These I feel quite sorry for these men. I know that they're in a high-pressure situation and everyone else is in it as well. But, like, imagine going on TV and admitting that, that, like, men are just toys to be played with. I know on my channel, I can sometimes come across a little bit misandrous because a lot of the men that we see in these shows are a bit naff. But also, men are still human beings. They still have their own sets of struggles and inner turmoils and fights, etc., in order to try and become good people. And I think somewhere along the line, they can get a bit misconstrued and lost as to what that is. But at the end of the day, surely everyone just wants, like, a good, rewarding life and everyone is entitled to love. What I want from men, always without failure. So I think this week's going to be... She always gets what she wants. I can't even see what they look like because this is so pixelated. Like the boys, the playmates don't know Miriam's secret. She's called them in to do some undercover work. Right, to so find nobody out knows if anything. Any of the boys have genuine feelings for her. How have you been here? Everybody has been so nice to me. Yeah. Everybody it seems like focused, but I need to find yeah. out a little bit more about them. So you want us to be your spies then? Yeah. Ah, I like it. <laughs> How far do you want us to go? Well, not too far. Not too far. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers for you, girls. Thank you I for coming over. Thank no you for inviting us. Cheers. Aww, Thank you, cheers. honey. What an interesting <laughs> segment. Our right. five guys have no idea who's waiting just around the corner. What will they make of Miriam's Father scantresses? Christmas. All the anxiety girls. <laughs> Why are they? Can you hear that? They've just like superimposed like girly giggling over the entire thing. Then did you hear that? They're not actually giggling like that. They're just like <laughs> as a voiceover sound effect. That's so strange. Why are they trying to make them out to be like? Oh, just dumb giggly women. Those are my friends from London. Yeah. Yeah, they're really nice girls. So I've had nice great people. people. Nice people. Nice <laughs> my friends from London who don't know anything, who are secret. I was kind of like, wow, what's going on here? <laughs> We'd only seen like one female and then there was three. This is the naked gazebo. Is it? And, uh, this is where we have all our meetings. We all get, we all get naked. Oh, yeah, they get naked they're really here. Nice. They're, they're really bubbly. They get straight to the point on asking about Miriam. How do you find Miriam? Yes, yeah, she's lovely. She is. Really nice. It's difficult, though, when there's... There's so much when competition. There's... Yeah. Well, Miriam's friends, they seem very nice and bubbly. But I'll probably say that um, the blonde one, I don't know her name, but... Uh, I mean, I've directly just blatantly asked her a question. I said, are they your real tits? And she said, yeah, they are. And I was going to ask if I could have a squeeze, but I didn't think she'd be up for that. <laughs> oh, he's just vile, isn't he? What I like... There's something about this type of male that just... It's exactly what I was saying earlier. You remember, remember literally a few minutes ago when I said, like, sometimes I can be a bit misandrist. That kind of thing, like, imagine just being like, are they your real tits? Can I have a squeeze? You're on TV, A, you're, you've just met this person, and you're also meant to be competing for the love of somebody else. But it's just like, it's so telling of how the majority, well, the majority of men, shall I say, maybe not the majority, but a subsect of men like this, how they think about women and how they expect women to behave. Like, why, like, he, he, I bet you he'll class it as being a bit of a cheeky lad, but it's like, that's just rude. That's just rude. You horrible, horrible girl. <laughs> Our five guys still haven't sussed that Miriam was born a man, but one of them will have a chance to when he gets closer. Was born a man. Unhelpful. Charmed. Guys, it's time for Miriam to make a choice. You've shown your strength, your determination, your sense of humour. But only one the frame rate is day. terrible. Miriam? Well, the one who's going on a date with me is going to be... Who? Dom. Dom? Okay. It's always the Marines go. Dom, you better get your swimming shorts. You're going on a romantic sailing adventure. Oh, really? Yeah, come on. I bet you are. As Miriam and Dom leave the villa for their date, how does Mark feel about being rejected? Yeah, because he won. I'm not disappointed one little bit. Oh. Because there's plenty more time to go on a date, and 
hopefully more time will come. The only chat there I've got to woo really. Okay, he seems to have changed his tune a little bit there, didn't he? I wonder if production off screen were like, you have to feign interest, you have to be interested. Like, why are you here if you're not interested? You need to make good TV. You're not getting any more filet mignon? Get out of my house. Do you know what I mean? The only chat there I've got to woo really is just to be myself and be the, my usual charm. Just be yourself, everybody else has got gout. I never done this before, no. so it's very exciting for yeah. me. Yeah. That should be lovely out there, nice and peaceful. Yeah. Sure <laughs> Gosh, the frame rate is this terrible. Year, because I think Don and me were sort of neck and neck at the moment. It's not just a normal Saturday night in Newcastle, it's uh, there's a lot more at stake. I think there's a boat and a woman with a degree. That's what he's like. I just hope, uh, you know, she likes him as a friend and nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Tom may want them to just be friends, but Miriam wants to dig a little deeper. Oh, for goodness sake. I would like sake. to know he has a sensitive side. You know, he seems like a really nice guy, and I really, I would like to find out a little bit more about him. Okay, all right, sis. I just feel, as I've said earlier, it just really feels like it's such a... It's so frustrating because I'm very much of the opinion, like, I will come out as trans to anyone who I'm dating, like, practically instantly. It, the first sentence out of my mouth if I was to meet someone in a club or something. I mean, I have a boyfriend now and it's gone down very well. I can't believe I just said that. Ludicrous. But I understand also the need to be stealth. I feel like being stealth offers a level of safety to trans people that living openly doesn't. If you live openly trans, there is almost like an element of danger to nearly everything you do. I mean, the same danger is there to people who live stealth, but not to the same level, if you know what I mean. I think I live quite stealth in my day-to-day -day life. Everyone in my friends and family, everyone who matters knows, and you guys on the internet know as well, but like, if I go to my local shop, the clerks in there aren't gonna know unless they watch me my stuff on YouTube, and that's, that's fine. Oh, it's really difficult, isn't it? Because these men are, or these, some of these men, at least, I assume some of these men on this show are looking to make like a genuine bond. And I just feel like the longer it's left, the less genuine that bond can ever be. But also production is at fault here for not making this a beautiful d dating show about a trans woman. They've made it all about this reveal moment that's going to happen at some point. All right, here we are. Oh, how horrible. I don't want to be on a boat at sea. Ever. What do you think you're different from the other guys? I mean, I've been to university. I've, um, been to I've joined the Marines. Got a degree. I've been to two sort of war zones. I've been to Afghanistan and I've been to Iraq. And so all we, those... So, um, tell me one of the stories of Iraq when you were there. Um, well, when I was at well, when I was in Iraq, I got, I got blown up by a hand grenade. I think she seemed quite impressed by some of my tales. That's a big scar score. there. Yeah. A couple of little bits of shrapnel there. Uh huh. Um, I've got a scar on the sole of my foot. Oh my uh, God. His war stories are fantastic. You know, he has so much to say. And if you give me a finger, you can feel oh. there. There's a little bit of shrapnel still left lodging me on. Yeah, you can feel it. My really goodness. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. When someone has a hard life, you know, and been through all that, being in Iraq and the war and all that, they get a little bit cold, but it seems like. Like, it really does, has a sensitive side, and I really like that. Do you like animals? Yeah, I love animals. Um, yeah. Oh. yeah? Do you like kids? Yeah, I, I do, I love kids. I'm not the most sensitive guy, to be honest, but I am quite sensitive. So what do you think about me? Uh, I think you're absolutely stunning. The first time she I didn't ask easy questions, to be honest. Typical women questions. Why do we be... The... Oh, why did they put that in there? She didn't ask typical woman questions. Okay, so what's a typical woman question, huh? Perfect night for you. Um... A perfect night. Oh, that's a hard one, really. <laughs> that's a really hard one. Um, well, women always ask, like, they watch your perfect night and sort of romantic questions. And oh, right. Straight off the top of your head, they're quite difficult to answer. A perfect, well, a perfect night for me would probably be, I mean, the most important thing on a perfect night is to have, like, the perfect woman. I'm ever. really struggling to understand what he's saying here. They they haven't mic'd him up very well at all. It's, again, the, all the budget has gone into this, like, shock moment at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's the most important thing. That was the most, what, what was the most important thing? 
I still didn't catch that. And Miriam seems comfortable with him getting close. Oh! If he knew, this would be such a genuinely beautiful moment about like the trans like hope of finding love. I don't know, you know. So what are you looking for in a man? In a man? In a man, yeah. I'm looking for someone who's mature. Someone mature. Intelligent. Intelligent. Someone not too serious. Not too and funny. And with the funny. Four things. I know, yeah. you are. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> he seems very mature. He seems very focused. He's fun to be with. Oh, she's so pretty. And uh, I kind of really, I'm feeling him. <laughs> Hi. Oh goodness! Stop zooming in on their legs. Who is this extra people? I mean, obviously they can't just go out sailing at sea by themselves. Champagne again? All they do is drink champagne and giggle. How are you doing? <laughs> Professional. I've got lipstick on my shirt from where she kissed me on the shoulder. Um, so take that as you will. Okay. <laughs> No. Oh. Ah, I can't give on. I'm pretty confident that it went reasonably well. Oh, the music is kicking up. Oh, well. The sun has set because they've all gone to the guillotine. While Dom and Miriam are out on their date, the boys are entertaining Miriam's playmates okay. and Mark's opening up to them. No. About what? I mean, they've been talking to me for ages. Just, to, just, just about what I thought of Miriam. Oh. But... I won't give her nothing away. So how do you find oh. Miriam? Are you getting along with her well? Can't stand her. <laughs> no. I sense that, you know, straight away. <laughs> Found that I could sort of just be a bit more flirtatious, be a bit more like... He can't just, stand Miriam. Sort of ...casting over kind of a person. Every single day you won't ever change. No. No, no stop it. Deluded man. <laughs> OK, everybody clap and run away. Fantastic. You've cornered oh, these two women to sing at them. Get your heart out, Fame Academy. The other lads join Mark in the gazebo, and the playmates work hard quizzing the guys. On what do you think of Miriam? I think she's lovely, she really yeah. is, but I haven't had the chance, like I said before, to really sit down and have a chat with her. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sitting here and she walks in, you know, when you turn, you don't just think, oh, here's Miriam, you think, yeah. <gasps> bloody hell, yeah, she's amazing, totally definitely. Cool. Okay, so they're clearly grilling them on, like, do they know anything? Is there a secret about Miriam girls? Is there a degree involved? I'm definitely getting that vibe. Like, why else would they have been brought here? But also, they don't know. So, like, is this just all speculation? Like, what is this section for? What are they, what are production trying to get from this section? Are they trying to get a shock moment of like, oh, do they know? Because surely if they were doing that, then it would ruin... I don't know, what is it, the last episode I guess she's going to reveal to them? Like, is she even going to reveal to them? Or are they going to have some doctor come in and say, She's got male genitals. Uh. Scott's clearly got eyes only for Miriam. Okay. But the competition between the boys has only just begun. Dom returns from his date, making quite an entrance. Hello. Hello. As we walk through the door, quite unexpectedly, she stopped and gave me a kiss, which obviously was really, really nice. But also, interestingly enough, wouldn't you, as like a contestant in this situation, be like, why is she kissing him? Why is she, would you feel like the need to be like, oh my goodness, I want to win? Or would you be a bit like, oh my God, I've been cheated on. I have no idea how I would respond in this situation because it also seems like a ludicrous situation to even be in. Regardless of like the gimmick of the show, even just like going to a foreign country on TV, plied with alcohol, doing all these physical exercises and physical activities, like, the emotions are going to be all over the place anyway. Ooh. The rest of the lads noticed that as well. Probably felt massive pangs of jealousy. Sort of have a little kiss and everything, and I thought, oh, you know, the competition's on, is it? Yeah, Look okay. at me carrying the bag. Miriam, oh, good. I think that Tom's been a bit intimidated by the date. I think he, he actually didn't realise that when they came back off the date, they were going to be so kind of... Like holding hands, giving a kiss. How'd it go, mate? Right. Yeah, that is a bit much. Sort of jealousy, isn't it? necessarily, but obviously, I, I do realise that you know he's probably my biggest competitor. But yeah, I'm sure the ah. date was not as good as the helicopter trip. No. 
<laughs> oh yeah, they yeah. had a helicopter right, trip, mate, didn't they? Yeah. And he goes, yeah, very well, mate. She seemed dead receptive and nothing, mate. That little kiss when you're walking around the pool there, that looked right. kind of staged, didn't it? Like, see, that's her little move, isn't it? Someone comes in carrying her bag and she gives him a kiss on the corner. That's got to be the thing. Mm. Uh, as far as letting dumb. Interesting. This is an interesting little insight into like how men interact with each other when there is like a desirable female present. Oh my goodness. Am I inadvertently going to learn something about masculine culture that I have no idea about? What do you do successfully? Quickly. Uh, as far as letting Dom snatch the money, I'm really going to try not to. It would be very sad if a, a Geordie beat me. Oh, yeah, I forget there's even money. The playmates work done, they leave the villa, and Miriam has the boys to herself. Right. Mark decides Aaron should sing a song. Aaron. Oh, does Mark decide? Lovely. I sing Miriam a nice song, yeah? We told him it'd be a really good idea if he sang Miriam a song, and it was just sort of a joke. We didn't think he'd do it, and he did. Never knew I could feel like this, like I've never seen the sky. This is a very boy band, isn't it? There's a little song that I heard in Moulin Rouge. I want to vanish. Oh, Moulin Rouge, you must be gay. Musical gays. Every day I'm loving you more and more. I think he loves the sound of his own voice, but um, his singing is, is a bit wank, really, to be honest. Frank. Listen to my heart, can you? Oh, I just I couldn't she, bear. She I couldn't bear. I'd die of cringe. Embarrassment. It. Everything. It was really, really cheesy. I don't know if she, she would like that or not, but I don't think I can do that straight away, especially when there was I Love You in the song as well. Yes, exactly. I love you until my death. I Love You are a really intimate thing that should be shared at, like, at the, the best moment you can think of to share them. This feels... Oh, this feels kind of... Cringe, embarrassing. <laughs> she got a stain Never. on her tank top. Oh, no. <laughs> the way the guys reacted, um, I think they might be a bit worried. Aww. They know I'm a bit of a dark horse because I'm the romantic one and I don't have much you chance to do right. You don't seem very romantic over the, the last couple of episodes, though, sis. I think she was laughing internally, same as us when he was singing it. Mm. Oh, I think that was a, such a nice thing to do. You know, impress me. <laughs> it was really nice. I think that was very cute. Really, Miriam? Really? OK. All it's right. a new day here at the villa. Remember, the guys are competing for £10,000. And, and the chance to suck a course, the affection of Miriam. The only cloud on the horizon is the fact that one of the guys has to be evicted in the next 24 hours. OK. The tension is rising. Yes. Do they just go back to the UK or what? And to help Miriam make her eviction decision, she's called in the playmates to oh, get the so boys they're back. to pick a saucy they haven't really left at all. Of a hat. Okay. Right, OK. What's this? Well, Miriam and the girls would like to do a little activity with you. In the hat, there are five different Miriam, Who's gonna... Miriam and the girls would love to do a little activity with you. The woman was too stunned to speak. In the hat, there are five different dares. Who's going to choose one? Go on, Nana. Striptease. Woo! Wow, the budget, sis. Now we've Unbelievable. Experts, so, uh, Marbell. Waiting in the wings is Marbell, a local Just in exotic the dancer who's come to teach the guys how to make the most of their natural assets. See you later on. <laughs> Natural oh, assets. Been a bit of a... Natural assets. Is that another like jibe at the fact that Miriam's had a breast job? I'd rather have been a bit of a better looking stripper, but uh, she 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 had to move, so That's it was quite good rude. to like watch and observe and that and flow, get a few yeah. tips. You right, must so relax. All... You come, you listen to music, yes, but oh, any chance, this is any much. excuse. The main point I learned for tonight's dance would just be slow, sexy, and basically just to show off all your assets. Yeah, but can you be more sexy? More. More sexy than already am? Yes. Yeah. I don't know what Everything is always a joke to men, isn't it? It's always like they feel so uncomfortable being genuinely something that they always have to make it a bit of a joke. And you can really see that here. It's almost like taking something seriously is seen as a little bit of weakness in a male dynamic group, shall we say. So... Interesting that she's then gone, can you be more sexy? And he's like, I'm already being sexy. No, you're being a dickhead is what you're doing. Oh, that's yes, going to be difficult. Yes. Yeah, the next one. At first when she came in, I wasn't that attracted to her, but when she started dancing, crikey. 
<gasps> Someone's gonna have a baby. She showed me a few little wiggles, a few little, few little turns. And you take it. And I like hand my glasses to her. Yeah, and you put your glass in your mouth and you make more. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, ear bro. juice. What is Mark yeah. leering at? Oh, oh, my goodness me. Mark really enjoyed the stripper. You must talk for the lady, so... Um... He, he was... He was just... Hypnotized, he couldn't take his eyes off her. Can which you stop just looking at a woman sick. like that? I know she's a stripper, but my goodness, like you're literally about to dribble yourself to death. Cool. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed having that teacher there. It was absolutely brilliant. I was well in my element. I was just like, couldn't get enough of it. I need an adult. I've <laughs> been in here for five days now, and I'm like, <laughs> Got a lot of testosterone flying about. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, you move be good. You can still really keep. Yeah, you move like you can still just be a sensible human <laughs> being. She was sexy and just wanted to just touch every part of my body. Like, can you move me like yeah. how to? Oh, good. Yeah. She actually made me feel really horny. Yeah, it definitely made me feel horny. Oh, Sorry, what has this show become? So the boys is this the sexy dance they're going to do for Miriam? Strip tease, and they're not bashful about bearing all to the girls. At the end of the day, I'm one of five, so we'll all be embarrassed, you know, 20% each. Have a couple of uh, drinks down me, get a bit of Dutch courage and uh, go for it. I'm sorry, am I about to see five penises? <laughs> Showtime, and the lads have oh my God, he's got his to dress ah, in what He's got his summer karate gi on. Oh, I used to wear one of them. Uh, when Scott used to teach me karate back in the day. And he actually did. Oh, Scott. This feels a bit sacrilege to the art of martial. I'm gonna get copyright clocked for this music. The music playing is Sex Bomb currently. And they're just giggling, giggly women, giggling. I think he's done this before. Did he learn this from that lady? Maybe. Oh my goodness. I'll have to see you later when we speak to her. But I, I think it could make quite a good impression. <laughs> I mean, sure. When he did the karate thing, it, it was very impressive, and uh, I want him to show me a little bit of karate. <laughs> oh, I enjoyed it. I, mean, I might take up a job or something in it. <laughs> you were enjoying that, I must admit. Okay, right. What does Mark do again? I was absolutely. A songwriter. myself. I was really nervous. <laughs> Is this how the routine is about just being sexy and trying to woo the girls, really? You know, little kisses on the cheeks, making sure that Miriam was the first one. Not Why have we got this show. shot of your bum? I don't want to see that. What? So, is this how a songwriter dresses? Is this the uniform of a songwriter? A Bordeaux wine top. It's just so cringe, isn't it? I'm, my heart is gonna like burst in any second now. Did he just lick her foot? Oh no. Yeah, I did enjoy it actually. Once I got into it, I enjoyed it. Oh no, not yeah, the copyright. Mark, uh, he's okay. He's, uh, I don't really feel anything for Mark. I really don't. I don't think he likes you, sis. I really don't think he does. Right, here we go. Person number three, Chef de party. Sexy eggs Benedict. I'm going to cream. And so was me art, so uh, I just sort of went with it. Right. What was that? that glasses? Oh. 
when I've got gout. Um, sure. I might have to put completely unrelated copyright music across here, like sexy jazz music or something. Because what is the point? Oh no, buttock jiggling. Oh, I'm just very confused. Very, very confused. Because this would, ironically, it's... This does happen quite a lot, but that's normally I've had a few, a few bevies. I don't know, I just don't enough, I've got to keep my boxer shorts on for this one. So um, the girls didn't see me good. Um, but, yeah. No, but all the men have. have. Because you all got naked in the gazebo? I think it's very sweet, and but I need someone who has to be a little bit more masculine and um, more manly. Oh, she wants a big man to ravage her. <laughs> oh, here we go. The lifeguard. Can he see you? No! Yeah, literally just came out and improvised the whole thing. Improvised the whole thing. So... I mean, sure. Oh, not the hip thrust. Is, this. is that... Acceptable. Do you know, I used to make serious educational content on YouTube. <laughs> now I'm just watching men do striptease performances. I could not believe it. What has my life become? Oh, grey boxer shorts, shorts are quite pleasant. They went over the wall. Oh, over the wall. Into the pool? I think with your mic on? I was amazing compared to some of the other guys, so I thought I need some help here. I thought, well, lifeguard swimming pool, let's just do it. So I did it. Sure, why not? Treat yourself. It go down quite well. Oh Tom, it was very unique and spontaneous. Unique. You know, the way he just jumped to the pool. Huh. Resuscitation! Quick, resuscitate! Mouse to mouth! I want one. Oh, here we go, his... Wow. Oh, I was so nervous when I was sat his inside. marine outfit. My goodness me. <laughs> Everyone seems to adore that, don't they? As soon as the music started playing, the nerves went, and I just went with the flow in. Everyone loves the man in uniform, don't they? I can't bear it. It's very full Monty. Oh, is that why they picked this music? Oh dear. Not Thank you. Yes, yes. Sure, sure. Okay, sure. Who else do we have? Or is this the last man? Is this the last man? Who else do we have? Set the scene. I think it comes across maybe a little bit cheesy, but at the end of the day, it's a game show. It's a game show. You do what you can to win. Is this a game show? In your box. I suppose and it is. This is one of my main tools. Damn, his uniform just looks fantastic. The way he moved his body and everything, he was real good. Mm. Yeah. Um. I think I'm in love already. <laughs> Sure. Why not? Treat yourself. Okay, so who's gonna win? She gave... I think she gave Tom and Dom there most attention, but let's see. Remaining five guys have bared all in an effort to win the heart of our Latino stunner, Miriam. Latino? He keeps saying the word Latino in a way that's like, she's actually Latina. So are they deliberately using a word here that denotes like masculinity or is it just like stupid english person doesn't know the difference between latino and latina it's difficult to tell but i'm on erring on the side of they're saying it on purpose next right. they invite her to play a game of truth or dare oh that's good spin gazebo oh. cam scott gets the first question and puts miriam on the spot out of all of us who do you like the most oh God, what a horrible question. So far? <gasps> yes. 
Let's go. It made me feel quite good, actually, because I, I, I didn't actually I think was it right. was me. I would never have thought it was me. Unsettled by Miriam's choice, Dom looks for reassurance. <gasps> oh, you're moving fast, Dom. Huh? Why did we zoom Dom in? started stroking Miriam up a little bit. Actually, Dom, can you sit here? Dom, can you sit over there? <laughs> you wrecked it. I'm fucking evicted. <laughs> evicted. <laughs> he pushed his hands on my leg, and I said, Dom, can you get up and sit over there? <laughs> Oh, she's a woman and in I, control. I think Dom is moving too fast. I think she was definitely playing me off against Tom and probably me and Tom off against Scott. Uh, the thing is, they're yeah, all like drinking. Can you see? They're all really drinking here. So, and there's no one else around, if you know what I mean. Like, we're looking at them through cameras and not like crew cameras, like security style cameras. So, if she felt a little bit threatened then or under pressure, there's no one there around her that isn't the guys who have also had a bit to drink or, you know, whatever. This power dynamic is very questionable. Who answered that question? Um, I feel like, you know, I'm, I've been playing with everybody's feelings. Yes. But it's part of the show. You yes. Know? The guys have to do their thing. I have to do my thing. Ooh. Then Scott stirs things up even more with a question for Mark. Do you fancy Miriam? <gasps> no, he doesn't. That's a very difficult question to ask. Miriam was kind of taken back by the fact that I re replied with, I'm not sure whether I fancied her or not. But uh, that, that was the truth. And, you know, you can't just sort of like look at someone and say, yeah, I fancy you straight away. You've got to get to know someone. And what I've seen of Miriam at the moment, I don't fancy. Mark, you came here to win or to waste your time? Oh, I came here to be myself. Did you come in? That's not the right answer. You came here to win. Oh, you came here to waste your time. Truthfully, I came here to win. Thank you. Okay. Oh, mood killer. I don't really like Mark at all. You know, I think he's very negative. And the way he talks and the question he asks, I don't think he's... He has to be here. No, I think he's going to be the next... Game okay, over, right? the lads head off to bed. Wow. But Miriam asks Tom to stay behind. Tom. You're really funny. Yeah. I like you. Yeah. Oh, you, you no! Think, similar to, I think, you know, like... About, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Not clocked on the gazebo cam. Yeah. This feels very uncomfortable. I don't like this. I can't speak for every single trans person and certainly not for every single trans person who watches my content or that I'm friends with, but I would not be in this situation without literally telling that man before this moment that I was trans. Me and Tom was a spontaneous moment and it just happened and he's a very special kid and, and I really like him a lot. A mutual thing it just seemed right at the time and uh, it was really the thing is she could have taken any second then to tell him any second i mean i know that would have put her in danger and maybe like jeopardized the entire production thing and maybe they would have also said no don't say that i still feel like even though the men are behaving in like kind of gross mid 2000s mid noughties like ways that men just behaved i still feel sorry for them because Production is lying to them about this situation, plying them with alcohol to lower their inhibitions. And it just feels like it's going to be this big gotcha moment, like, remember what you did kind of thing. And it's not going to it's not going to end with true love. It's going to end with laughter and ridicule. And it's so, like, greasy and gross to watch. Nice, yeah. It all works. Because I feel sorry. I feel sorry for Miriam as well, because she's had to go really along with this. I him a kiss. She's 21 years old, 21 years old, trying to make it in the entertainment industry. And apparently, according to a very well-known podcast, this show was not at all what it was advertised to her as, which adds another layer of production being disrespectful to both their talent and their contestants. And I enjoyed the moment a lot. I'm sure you did, Miriam. I'm sure he did too. She's told me that it wasn't, it was more of a kiss than a snog. But he's, uh, he's definitely sure that it was a, a full-on how's your father tongues and all that. How's your father? Yes. That's so British. Probably, yeah. Tongues a lot. Oh, a really powerful, intimate no kiss. Or anything like that, you know? When it comes to love, I what? Okay, this is going on a bit, a bit long now, sis.
but Tom and Miriam aren't alone. On the sofa in the lounge, Aaron has a ringside seat. Oh, oh my God. See that? Yeah, that, that was quite, that was a bit of a shock, actually. But with the petting getting heavy, Miriam's worried Tom's getting a little too close for comfort. Every day is getting harder for me because I get to know everybody's feelings and they tend to be their own self and they tend to be, you know... Oh, <laughs> my anxiety is so high. I can't do this anymore, girls. Honest, and they're falling for me and it's very hard for me, you know, and more because what I am and speak with someone that doesn't know what I am. You know? Who you are, not oh. what you are, sis. You're not a thing, you're a human. Hey, wait a second. Yeah, I've had a really good evening, you know? Have you had a good night? Yeah, I did. I think it might be harder for them too, you know, in the future to tell them what I am and see what happens. So I'm just starting to realize right now how hard it's gonna be in the next show for me. This episode, this episode so far has been the hardest one to watch from a point of not necessarily just from how production and how the narrator and how the show is laid out to be like pun, pun, pun joke at Miriam's expense, at Miriam's expense. It's like, it's like we're watching active deception and it's really difficult to watch, especially me as a trans person myself, because I couldn't participate in this level of deception. Ah! Right, Miriam is off to bed. Good night, Miriam. Right, the next morning, girls. The next morning, Miriam calls in the girls to catch up on the gossip. Okay. <gasps> you kissed yeah. him. But it's so easy to do that because he's so good looking. He is. And he's good charming. Looking. But what was the kiss like, more importantly? I just let myself go. Oh. This really is an interesting dynamic. They've brought these two girls on to just got, like get girly talk. I really did not expect this in this show. I really thought it was just going to be constantly hamming up just how much of a man Miriam is. But actually, this is showing her as like what women do. Women get together and they talk about like the boys that they're seeing. That's what women do. Unless, of course, you are a lesbian, in which obviously then it's about the girls you are seeing. Mm. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. So was is it just kissing? Or did of you course it was just kissing. Just kissing. <laughs> just kissing. Nothing else. Nothing else. Does she know me? Just checking. I don't go that far. <laughs> Last night's kiss out of the way, it's time to get down to the business of who Miriam will take on the next oh, date. Oh, who's she going to take? He's a very genuine mm. guy, Aaron. Right. Yeah. Very, very genuine. You know, there's no mm. hidden agenda with him. That's right. I don't want to go on a date with Aaron, I think. Why did they have to say hidden agenda again? Like... It's very strange, the language that they're using, that they're putting forward, that they've decided to put in the show in the final cut as well, because I'm sure multiple other different conversations happened then. But again, we're looking at Polaroid headshots to see who goes. Maybe because I don't want to be talking I about I think cooking. Mark's going to go. This guy looks very quiet, and uh, he always uh, seems him like thinking a lot. She's going to send Mark yeah. away, surely. <laughs> to find out what he's what thinking he's is, and yeah, what he's he about. Does, he yeah. I could not have that much like really hair like tickling my lips. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was very... Very, very impressive, you know, very impressive. Yeah. Maybe you can teach you a few moves. I know, I tell her. <laughs> yeah. I think she likes Scott the most. Well, she said it, didn't she? So, is it eviction time? Oh! That was quick. Guys, you've all done incredibly well. You've all impressed Miriam in your own ways. <sighs> but as you know, only one of you can go on the date. Only one of you will make it to the pageant! Scott looks to be the leading contender. Or does Miriam fancy continuing with Tom where they left off last night? Ugh. Or giving Mark a last chance to impress? Wait, is this a date? Another date? Scott. <laughs> I'm... Scott, hope you got a head for heights. You're going. On a tandem parasail. Quality. <laughs> Lovely. Tandem okay, parasailing. Guys. Very into that. I went paragliding, para, parasailing off, uh, paragliding off the coast of Sicily, girls. I want to get to know him a little bit more. You know why he's so How quiet. are you going what to get to know someone? All the time when he's like quiet and thinking. All you get to know is. If she made the first move, then definitely. But I, I don't want to. I don't want to ruin things like that. Anything. And, and I'm not really like that as a person. I don't really want to jump the gun and I would hate the turn down anyway I'd hate to be turned down so down so the D 
deeply ocean girls. There's lots of ocean activity here. I'm not really into it. I can feel it right now. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm terrified now. Oh. <laughs> Is this getting to know someone? quite fun actually i'd do that at the beginning i was scared but once when i was on the top i was enjoying it quite a lovely moment to share she was just screaming the whole way out there really because i think she's a little bit mad i think she is constantly I screaming help it, you know, i have to scream it was like it was just emotion and the feeling and everything the estrogen girls it makes you scream it Sometimes does, I got a bit why. scared when she was leaning back because I thought she was going to fall out. Why are they leaning back like that? Oh my goodness. I wanted more, then I wanted to stop, then I was screaming for some more. This looks so chaotically out of control. Like, what is happening? Is this, is this normal? Just like dunking? It was just so much fun. I had so much fun. It was one of the best dates I ever had. I didn't get really You've excited. You've had some pretty impressive dates like, on the show so far. Start growing down there, but uh, no, it, it felt really good. What? It was nice to like start growing. Didn't get really excited or anything. I think like start growing down there, but uh, no, it, it felt really good. What a weird thing it's to nice be in there. Why did they uh, Any beautiful women. I can start smiling. <laughs> I think I'm having so much fun. I want to do it again. <laughs> I can't. I've got no like, words for it. It's just so good. It's really good. It's really brilliant. So they had a Best lovely day. I want to keep going. Keep doing it again, definitely. Mm. An amazing idea for a date, I guess. But... Maybe not Scott in this context. and Miriam's date seems to be going well so far, but can Dinner. Scott's quiet manner charm her one to one over lunch? Right, lunch, lunchy poos. You really impressed. What's gonna happen at lunchy plops? You know the karate thing when you try to kickbox. Karate. Yeah. Karate. Lunch was really nice. Um, it was really nice actually to sit down like one to one and like talk to each other probably. Um, she likes her food definitely, so because she, she didn't stop eating. Mm. What a weird thing to say. It's quite down to earth. I think she's quite straight with people as well, so that was quite good to find out. Do you think you're going to find love? Of course. Of course I think I'm going to find love. Is, is that what you want, to find the one? Yeah, the one for me, the right person for me. You know, someone 21 that, though, sis. So very that young. I can be with, that, I'm, that is fun to be with. Yeah. You know, I really have a very nice conversation with, with Scott. I uh -huh. think he's a... Uh, Really honest, you know, he's always himself. I, I think right. as, as the day's gone on and each day has passed, I think my attraction towards you is um, has got more and more. Oh. Um, we still don't really know each other too well, but I'm definitely attracted to you quite a lot, yeah. I also have to remember that this is a show that takes place over 10 days in Ibiza. So not only are you drinking constantly, getting to know someone, you're on a TV show, but actually like going away and meeting someone elsewhere also increases the level of like love and emotion you feel. And I think that production kind of banked on that because they want this explosive like fighty moment. All they've been saying throughout this entire show is like this explosive dating nonsense. Oh my God, the boys are filled with testosterone. And it's like, they're hoping for this big fight moment of like drama. That's what they're hoping for. But I don't know what they honestly thought the backlash would be. Who, who in production didn't for one second think, is this wrong? Is the backlash that we're going to, are we going to get like a lot of backlash from this? Because damn right they should have. I think you're very beautiful. And um, I, I think, I think when I get to know you, I think I'll, I'll like you even more and more. Definitely. Mm. I hope, I hope so. Oh, I hope so. There were no kiss uh, or anything like that. It was just get to know each other a little bit more, and I really like that. Mm. Yeah, I really like that a lot. I think it's too early anyway. If she's trying to find love, as she says, then you don't want to be jumping straight down her throat straight away. So I think I played it right. Yeah, love is something that develops over time. It's been a bad day. It's been the best day so far. Cheers. Okay. I had so much fun with him today. I use right. I can deny you. He's so much fun. He's different from the other guys. <laughs> He's very different from the other guys. You're quite, yes. Oh, who's gonna go? Well, Scott clearly is safe, right? Clearly. So Later is that Dom afternoon, and Tom. The boys line up back at the villa for Miriam's eviction decision. I think Mark's One going. One of our five hunks is about to get his marching orders. 
if I got evicted, especially after kissing her last night, then, well, I feel shocked and used, quite frankly. I think I bet Aaron, you would. because I think he's a bit too cheesy. It quite possibly could be me. I mean, she's tasted my food, and I, <laughs> so... Uh, I think Mark might go, to be honest. Today, I think the person she's going to choose is definitely going to be me. Yes. Definitely. I think it's going it to be you. Him, then it'll be a bit of a shock to everybody, I think. Guys, we're here again. This is a really weird concept, because he it's knows he's going. Oh, God. One of you will be leaving the villa and not coming back. And not and coming back! Day. So deal with it! Damn. I really enjoyed the date yesterday. You were really nice. But you grabbed me. But you need to wash your hands a yes. little bit more. So I'm sending you, know, you to the guillotine. You're moving too fast. Right. Scott, I think you're really an honest person. You're really nice, but you still need to talk a little bit more. Right. You know, get to know a little bit more. You've been great, Tom. Very nice. I really enjoyed this talking fast. to you. This is fast. This is lot. really quick. This is like boom, 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 gone. You've been good. Aaron, what can I say about you? You seem nice, lovely. Mm, interesting, you know, but you're getting there. <laughs> you're getting there? Mark, you're getting where? You still haven't impressed me, you know, so you haven't done anything to impress me. He won the go-kart So, the one who's leaving today. Bye, Mark! See you later! Mark. Ah! Of course! We knew it, sis! We knew it. I knew it. See what I mean? Oh, what a weird feeling, though. This is somber. I'm upset that Mark's gone because he's become a really good friend in the house. I know him and Miriam. He didn't seem like a particularly nice person, but anyway, so we, we all expected he was going to go. But I'm still gutted that he's gone. I don't find him interesting at all. Do you know what I mean? She's not my type of girl. Oh. End of the day, you know, she needs to really look at herself because I'm a geezer. And she's a loser. Oh, what a sore loser. I'm a geezer and she's a loser. What? That seemed very pointed and inappropriate. Is that it? Oh my God, Next that's time it. On Literally, what a weird place to leave it on. Okay, Mark's gone. See you later, Mark. So, my lovelies, I have some thoughts about what we have seen today. Today has been a masterclass in Miss misogyny from the the typical man of the early noughties i don't really like how men have come across in this show i said earlier that it was a little bit like i still feel something for them because they have been like deceptively duped into this show there's no informed consent is what i'm trying to say there's no informed consent as to what they're actually getting involved with in this show and i don't just mean with miriam i mean like the level of media attention that they the, the production knew that this show was going to get they did it for attention they did this show for attention they should have been able to warn the contestants of the type of attention that they would get from it because clearly this show has led to lawsuits this show has led to people having lifelong issues from this show and miriam Miriam isn't even with us anymore. I did, however, find Mark's storyline a little bit confusing in this episode because at the beginning of the episode with the go-karting situation, it sounded like he was interested and wanted to get to know Miriam more. And that sounds more like production being like, you need to be more, you need to be more interested. You need to be more interested in why you're here. Like, why are you here, sir? Kind of thing, rather than any sort of like genuine feelings. Because at the end there, with his comment of like, I'm a geezer and she's a loser, that's such a weird. Like, what a weird... Did something happen off screen that we weren't uh, weren't privy to? Like, I remember in the first episode, I think it was, he said, no, oh, I don't like the fact that she smokes. And it's like, is that enough? Is that like... He's called her a loser. That's quite pointed language. Did something happen? Did some disagreement happen? Or is he a bit like jealous and jaded that she's been getting along more with other people but then exactly that's what this game show is designed for not only is the gimmick going to be revealed it's also like a high pressure competitive environment between men anyway i this show has brought out so many different emotions today my anxiety has dropped now thank goodness for that i still feel like we're going to see something that i don't want to see though in the upcoming episodes i just hope that this can exist online Anyway, my loves, it is now time for the Patreons. I want to say a huge thank you to you guys for supporting my Chanel. You make shows like this able to thrive and survive. The only way I can really make reactions to shows like this possible is through my Patreon because 
These are difficult to get around. Copyright, my loves. These are very, very difficult. Today's Twitch shout out goes to Ox Can't Even. Thank you so much for following me over on Twitch, you stunning woman on the go. And if you want to be in with a chance of being featured in my next video's Twitch shout out, make sure you follow me on Twitch. It is Luxaria Plays, and I stream Mondays and Thursdays, my lovelies. And of course, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons Aloria, Dr. Dreamerella, Stephanie Neotupski, Beeble32, Shell Herman, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Crafty Leaks, Danielle, Dr. A, Jen. Devon, Elizabeth Stone, Eric Castillo, Jen Martin, Jenny Hendricks, Caitlin Wright, Laura Jane, Laura Jane again, Les Banana, Lisa Pennington, Min Min TM, Moisten98, Mariah Sherman, Nixie Tricks, Paolo Rivera, Rachel D. Seabiscuit, Romano, Ryan Vita, Sasha Smith, Sexy Taxi RN, Slampire Queen, Steph Utech, Travel Full, Tromo, Victoria Carella, and Orcos Samoji. And you know what, my lovelies? I'm gonna leave it on a very interesting note today, and that is. Don't touch people without their consent. Da! I feel like a lot of the shows we watch on this Chanel involve some way people touching each other without consent, shall we say. Especially on something like Trini and Susanna. I mean, there was a lot of alcohol involved in that situation, but she stood up for herself. Mir Miriam stood up for herself and said, no, can you switch places? You're, you're moving too quickly. I really respect that, actually. I should probably apply that to more in my life. And with that, my loves, I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully something a little bit less stressful, right? <laughs>